Your friend, Eric Darling here with Darling Data. And uh, today, actually I should say tonight's video, we're, we're, we're doing some night recording for uh, reasons that I don't have to explain to you. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, da, 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 joins with no equality predicates because um, gosh, have I seen these just cause a disgusting amount of performance problems in my time. Um, part of the problem with uh, joins with no equality predicates is that uh, you are pretty much lumped into one type of join, and that is the humble nested loops join. Uh, and what we'll find is that even with great indexes in place, there is just absolutely no helping some queries. Um, the other thing we're going to find is that sometimes we need to introduce some sort of hacky hashy equality predicate type thing so that we can get reasonable performance out of our queries. Um, but before we dig into all that, you know what time it is. Uh, it's time for me to tell you how to give me money. Um, you can sign up for very low cost memberships to say thank you for all the videos, all the time and, and stuff that goes into these these miraculous, miraculous things that has bit my tongue. Uh, if you can't, they're like four bucks a month, and there's a link in the description that you can click on to uh, to join the channel. Uh, if if you're all out of four bucks, you can uh, you can always like uh, like these videos. You can in engage and interact with me in other ways that uh, I I find appealing. Uh, you can comment on the videos. The comment sections have been great lately, uh, so thank you to everyone who continues to do that. Uh, and you can also subscribe to the channel uh, for the absolutely low, low price of zero dollars. And you can get notified also for the low price of zero dollars every time uh, one of these things goes live. Um, if you are uh, the type of person who says, gosh, we could use Eric Darling's help with our SQL servers, uh, these are the types of things that I excel at. Um, I, I have, I've done over 700 of them uh, now, uh, just with Darling Data uh, as an independent consultant. Uh, well, I mean combined, not like each. <laughs> that would be nuts. Uh, and, and that's not even my entire consulting career. Ima imagine that. Uh, so you, know, you, can, you can hire me for all those things. If you would like some uh, low-cost, incredibly high-quality SQL Server training, um, all the performance tuning in the world, really, uh, I have all of it. I mean, what else, what else is there from be, be, uh, other than beginner, intermediate, and expert? I can't think of anything. And you can get it all for 75% off, which means the cost is about 150 USD. Uh, and uh, what do you call it there? Uh, that's for life. Yeah, you, you, never, you don't have to, like, resubscribe to any of the stuff you get in this bundle. Uh, it is everything for all eternity. So that's, that's nice for you. As far as upcoming events go, where I will be live and in person, uh, shaking you upside down by your ankles, uh, emptying out your pockets like a schoolyard bully, uh, I will be at November. I will be at Past Data Summit, November fourth and fifth, co-hosting two days of uh, performance tuning grandiosity with Kendra Little. Uh, if there's an event near you that could use a precon speaker, uh, let me know because I I, I I I I got precons and I will travel. So, with that out of the way, let, let, us, let us engage in festivities. Let us, let us have fun with our SQL Server selves. Uh, let the, uh, the, for some reason, the click wouldn't work, so that all went black. That was fun. So, uh, let's make sure we have no indexes. And the first thing I want to show you is that, and this is, uh, this is actually kind of like, uh, a, probably a little bit more than uh, you, you may have bargained for, um, when you started watching this, but there's some, something really interesting that can happen to parallel nested loops queries or parallel nested, parallel nested loop query plans when uh, you are guaranteed to have one single row on the outer part of the nested loops join. And this is not something that happens uh, when, you, uh, when you don't. If you have more than one row, I mean, if you have zero rows, I guess you don't have to worry too much about it. But if you have more than one row, things can get a little weird. But first, let's take a look at this query plan. So this finishes relatively quickly. And the reason why this finishes relatively quickly is because there's exactly one row in the users table with an ID of 22656. Now, granted, granted, user ID 22656 is Mr. John Skeet. You have a million plus 
reputation points on Stack Overflow. Uh, even in the 2013 copy, he has that many. So I think, anyway, it's a big number. But uh, <laughs> if we look at the query plan, uh, something really cool happens. Um, at least I think it's cool. You might not think it's cool. But if we look through this, uh, we have sort of a, a typical uh, guaranteed one row uh, nested loops, parallel nested loops plan, where we uh, get our one row from the users table. And then we distribute that row out to our streams. And this is, of course, broadcast partitioning, which means that, that, one, that the one value from that row ends up on multiple threads, on, well, I mean, on dot threads, really. And what happens on the inner side of the nest, parallel nested loops join, and the reason why this is unique is because our, our row is unique. And when we look at uh, the number of, the way that the rows get distributed on parallel threads, uh, they do not, you do not, normally you would see uh, 17142169 on every thread because that's what the inner side of a parallel nested loops join does. It runs dot copies of whatever you do on the inner side of the nested loops join, which can be awful sometimes. Other times, when you're guaranteed one row from the outer portion, uh, you can end up with a much more, usually a much more efficient query plan where uh, those rows do get spread out. So if you added up all those numbers that I just stuck my hand into like a weirdo, uh, you would get 17124169, which, so that's cool. What happens when you don't? When you don't guarantee one row. So the first thing I want to show you is that if we look at um, all the users in the users table whose IDs are between 22656 and 22666, there's only one other of them, right? There's only one other ID in there. But if we look for this, where ID is between 22656 and 22657, SQL Server is still going to expect two rows to come out of there. And because of that, our query plan is going to change uh, drastically and, and dramatically. It's going to be awful. And I don't know, some, something about night recording is making the shadows over here a little weird. I don't, I don't, know, how to, I don't know how to get that to be any less weird right now. Uh, I can just close my arms so you can't really see behind me, and then I can just do weird little robot T-Rex type arm things, and I don't know. That won't look awkward at all, will it? <laughs> no, not one bit. Uh, but if we look at the query plan, uh, it changed quite a bit, and it took quite a bit longer. Uh, so this took about 22 and a half seconds. Eesh. Eesh. That didn't do good. Uh, and all, all, just about all of that time is spent... Uh, in between these two things right here, uh, scanning the clustered index to get uh, new rows out and spooling those rows into a lazy table spool. Uh, I've got lots of videos about how lazy table spools work. Um, the short of it is that uh, SQL Server takes the values that come out of here and it sends them over here. And then the first time this executes, uh, SQL Server runs the clustered index scan over there. Let me zoom in so my pointing is a little bit more effective. Uh, SQL Server runs the clustered index scan and gets whatever rows it needs uh, that for the predicate that gets passed over here. Uh, when it's done with that, uh, it truncates the spool, and the next row that comes in, it repopulates the spool uh, by scanning the table, or usually scanning. Generally, if you have a seek, in, generally if you have a seek over there, you won't see a table. Sometimes you will, but in general, uh, like hitting this, let's just say hitting this object to get the next set of rows out to populate the table spool with is what happens. Uh, this just takes a very long time, and part of why it takes a long time is because we end up with very, very lopsided parallelism. If you look at this, all of the rows end up on a single thread. This is quite abnormal a lot of the time, but it can be very normal um, when you have th these, these, sorts of, uh, uh, these sorts of plan shapes. The reason why this happens here is because, you know, uh, we're looking for a, a single thing at a time, and uh, we just get some really unfortunate data distribution stuff happening in the post table. Uh, so we end up just putting all of our work on one thread for the two iterations of the, the nested loops join, because um, uh, even, well, really, really the one iteration, but because only one row comes out, even though we expect two rows, but SQL Server sort of def like getting, getting ready to defend itself against two rows means that we lose that guaranteed one row on the outer side of the nested loops thing, and that sort of messes us up a bit. Uh, you'll see that the, um, the partitioning type in here changes from broadcast to round robin meaning that this thing just, you know, 
puts things on threads as they come out, and that's you know kind of kind of not good for this situation. Uh, of course, having an index on the post table for last activity date is pretty helpful in both scenarios. Um, one thing that is kind of a downer, though, is that uh, with that with that good index in place, the original query slows down a bit. Uh, this goes from finishing just about instantly with a parallel plan to taking a bit longer with a serial plan. Now, if you remember, the parallel plan spread out you know those dot threads pretty nicely, and we did did all this work just just about instantly. Now we lost a little bit of efficiency here, right? This is about one. Ooh, oopsie, easy. This is about one point seven seconds now, which isn't great, but I think you know generally the efficiency that you gain with this query, where this thing no longer takes like twenty two seconds to run, uh, this thing takes another one point seven seconds to run. It makes it worthwhile. What you have to watch when you are writing queries like this that do not have a direct equality predicate, right? The only thing that the only our only predicate in the join clause is between is where the last activity date on the post table is between the creation date and the last access date on the post table. You have to be really careful that your join your join keys uh, are well indexed for this sort of thing, uh, and of course the you know bigger and you know, more more involved your queries are, the harder that gets to you know uh, get the harder that the harder that gets to um, to really index for. So let's get rid of our, these indexes, and let's talk about a slightly different kind of um, of range query. Now uh, I can't actually run this one to completion. This thing basically never finishes. Uh, I've never never spent um, too too long trying to get this to run. I think the longest I let it run for was about 20 minutes and it really just, you know, made, really just made the room hot. <laughs> the, the laptop the laptop was sizzling. I think could have could have used it like a griddle. But uh this will basically never finish. Uh it's a real unfortunate sort of situation and it's made even more unfortunate by the fact that um you know, SQL like SQL Server asks for some kind of silly indexes. So uh, if we ran this multiple times, SQL Server would eventually suggest an index on display name. And I'm gonna, and the, the original index it wanted was on post type ID, comma last editor display name. I'm just gonna put this in the where clause here to you know shortcut having to do all that stuff. Because um, it, it effectively gives you the same thing. But what's really rough is that unless we write our query with a, an equality predicate like this, Right, like let's say that we let's actually give you a slightly better example. Let's do this first, and let's look at what SQL Server comes up with for a query plan. Uh, seeks into the post table, and then does all of this sort of weird work in a nested loops join to hit the users table. Uh, this will never finish either. If we change, if we stick a force order hint on here, and we look at what happens, we're going to see a query plan that looks a lot like the one that we saw up above before we had an index. The problem is this one basically never finishes either. This one, you know, just does really poorly. Um, and yeah, it, it basically just never finishes. Uh, a lot of the problem is that you have, you know, two point, like I said early on in the video, when you have a join without an equality predicate, you are, you are basically at the mercy of nested loops. So a parallel nested loops here where you are not guaranteed one row on the outside means that you're gonna spool a whole lot of rows in here, right? And that's, that's pretty painful. So you have 2.4 million something rows here. That means 2.4 million rows are gonna end up on each thread. And if you look at this number, you can see why this is going to take a very long time, right? SQL Server, like the estimate here is actually kind of close to reality because it's that 2.4 something million number times eight, right? So this actually is how many rows end up on each thread every time you go into this side of the join and that table spool just does not buy you anything there. The only thing that I've ever found that helps at all with this is to give SQL Server some kind of a quality predicate. Now, uh, if I were doing this like with a client to really help them get a query running faster, I would probably make computed columns that do something like this 
so that I can have uh, a sargable equality predicate for this join. But in this case, this actually gets us good enough performance. Uh, the problem is that if we don't add that force order hint in, if we just do this, we end up with this awful execution plan again. With the force order hint on there, we end up with a much more favorable execution plan. Now SQL Server, because we have that equality predicate, uh, we can um, we can at least get a hash. We can get a hash join here. Now the logic of this may not be a hundred percent correct because I'm saying where the display name equals a display name and the display names like this. There are all sorts of ways that you might need to logically look at this to figure out if that is if what if what we're doing here is exactly correct. One other thing that you could do is find like the min length of uh, display names in the users table and just match on the minimum length of one being equal to the like minimum length of another, which is like I think it's like three characters over in the users table. Uh, there are all sorts of ways that you can do this. Uh, or look at this or approach this. Uh, you might even try hashing like some, some, some of it, or you might even try hashing the display names or something like that. But the goal is to just get something, that, something that's an equality predicate into the join clause so that when you run this, SQL Server has other options for join types. And when you run this, it actually finishes pretty quickly uh, with those indexes in place. Uh, is, this, is this result correct? I don't know. You know why I don't know? because none of the other queries finish. So uh, that's fun there. Uh, but it was my, my attempt to kind of give you uh, some advice on how to start tuning these queries and how to start getting at least some semblance of a reasonable query plan back. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, or uh, oh, I don't actually forget when I said it, uh, joining, joins without equality predicates have, have really caused a lot of performance problems that I've seen over the years especially when there are, there are large, really large tables involved. And like, you know, almost without fail, there's no good indexes to support what you're actually doing. And almost without fail, uh, you know, it takes a lot of effort to get these queries to do anything reasonably fast. So I'm gonna wrap this one up because I got a few other uh, videos that I need to record this evening. Um, so I'm gonna get this one, this one on the books. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Uh, I realize that this, the, 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 the outcome of this video is a little disappointing because, uh, you know, there, there's, there, there really is a lot of thought that has to go into uh, what makes sense for any sort of a quality predicate in here. Uh, and that can take a lot of tinkering and tweaking. And that's, that's just a lot of time and effort that you're going to have to spend, uh, you know, f reasoning with the data that you have in your tables. Uh, for me, this is probably a close enough approximation uh, that actually gets some results back and gets the query to finish. But, you know, uh, you, mi you might have a completely different set of requirements that make this absolutely useful. So, from me and Bats Maru, my only friend in the world, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good night.